Welcome once again to our Sunday worship from the Stamford Endowed Schools. The chapel here has been part of the life of Stamford since the 12th century. When it ceased to be a parish church in the mid 16th century, it became a schoolroom for Stamford School when the school itself moved from a chapel inside St Mary's Stamford. What was St Paul's then became a schoolroom for about 400 years until 1929. In 1919, the headmaster, Canon Day, decided that the school needed an appropriate memorial to the boys who had fallen in the Great War. That plan came to fruition in 1930. Canon Day would never have thought that he would be a headmaster who would steer Stamford School through another great conflict from 1939 to 1945. The chapel holds our memorial to those boys who fell in those conflicts. All of them would have used the chapel either as a schoolroom or a place of worship. And as the country turns its mind to remembrance this weekend, we acknowledge that remembrance allows us to spend time thinking about the continuity that our schools and chapel represent. When we think of our boys who served on land, sea and in the air, we also think of our girls who served in the armed forces across the world, worked on the land, in medicine, in factories. So in this week of remembrance, we will reflect on those who served and of those who gave their all in those great conflicts and also remember those who continue to serve today. But now we continue with our gathering prayer. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. Chapel Choir sing the hymn, Lord Jesus Christ. Our reading this morning comes from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 6 and is read by David Lovell Brown. The Armour of God Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. The anthem from the Chapel Choir for Remembrance is for the fallen, a setting of the famous words by Lawrence Binion, They shall grow not old. Every now and then a visitor to the Stanford Endowed Schools asks if they can visit the chapel at Stanford School. Mostly it is former students or inquiring parents. Occasionally it is different. A few years ago a man came by late in the afternoon to ask if he could visit the chapel. It turned out that he had learned that his father had a memorial in the chapel. It was the only memorial that this man had ever known for his father who fell in France in World War II. Just last year an elderly visitor on one of the Heritage Open Days discovered that her grandfather was listed amongst the fallen on the memorial to the boys who fell in the Great War. The names that our memorials hold link still to people today and help form us as the people we are. We do this through memory and in particular through remembrance. Last year Channel 4 ran a series of programmes called My Grandfather's War with well-known names like Mark Rylance and Helena Bonham Carter charting the experiences that their grandfathers had had in the Second World War. It was though Carrie Mulligan's story that took me and the rest of my family by surprise. Her account was of her grandfather, who was a gunnery officer on HMS Indefatigable, an illustrious class aircraft carrier which became the flagship of the first aircraft carrier squadron in the British Pacific Fleet. This was the ship and campaign in which my own father served in World War II. I learnt a great deal that I didn't know about my father's war. I learnt that his ship had been involved in Operation Iceberg, which was the liberation of Okinawa. This was where Indefatigable was hit by a kamikaze pilot. And I do have photographs of Indefatigable in Tokyo Bay for the Japanese surrender. At the VJ Day celebrations on the National Arboretum in Staffordshire, Albert Les Wills spoke movingly to the nation of his experiences serving in the Royal Navy in World War II. What was extraordinary for me to discover was that Les trained at the same time and place as my father and served with him on HMS Indefatigable from 1944 to 1945. The connections to the past are still with us. But what I also have from that time are my father's prayer book and Bible with inscriptions from his father, a country priest in Leicestershire. 
What I've received from that time is an understanding that in the greatest time of peril and hardship, faith still exists. We have to walk gently here, but it seems that at the heart of the Christian faith is the notion that even if we are lost in the hardest and most tragic of events, God's love does not cease. And if I have to think of all the things that I have, it's perhaps that which matters most. And with remembrance in mind, our prayers are led by Ben O'Neill. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayer and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and to our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Amen. And so let us pray those words that our Saviour himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This week we'll see remembrance wreaths laid in all our schools, and our closing music, Elgar's Nimrod, reminds us that despite the restrictions, we remember alongside the rest of our nation. And so to our blessing. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all mankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, come down upon and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.